Welcome back my amateur decorating friends. Thanks for tuning in to video number two. Now on to more trials and tribulations. Come on, you know everything is a journey with me. Here's video number two. Okay, refusing to allow this project to defeat me, I have gone back and basically stripped off all of that excess um, glue and all of the stain that I put on there finding that there was a beautiful red table underneath that's really nice but it's nice and smooth so soon we'll be able to move on but I wanted to always take a moment to share what I learned from my mistakes as you know the top was already done with a crackle paint using glue and, and over the course of repairing the table um, here's what I've managed to discover is that I can now remove crackle paint very easily. All you have to do is take a blow dryer as long as you haven't put anything on top of it and even if you have you can try this okay take a blow dryer and just rub it over holding it away about maybe six to eight inches and just do that for just maybe about 60 seconds you don't want to get this uh, glue too hot and then you should be able to find a corner and just gently pull I, and that's exactly what I did. So now I'm able to remove the crackle paint from the top. It's not taking away um, any, any of the original wood or anything is coming up with it. It's all paint that's being removed just by pulling it off with my hand. Remember, just like you used to do when you were in elementary school. You put the glue on your hand and you just pulled it off. Oh, come on. I know there's one more weird, weird kid out there other than me. And that's exactly what you would need to do to remove crackle paint and glue. Remember, just a little blow dryer, running it over it for about 60 seconds, and then voila, this is what you have. Easy. So as you can see, we began again. And the first thing we did was spray painted the entire table gold. We turned it upside down, spray painted the bottom first of the top, and then we turned it over, made sure that everything was perfect from the top down to the legs. And now I've begun to apply my crackle paint. So what I've done is turned the table over on its side, and I began painting the back of the legs as well as the back of the table. That's the best way to ensure that you've got your best presentation forward because you're going to end on the front of the table. And once again, we applied our glue, and then we applied our paint. And as you can clearly see, it's already starting to crackle within a couple of hours. And I'm actually crackling the legs as well as the top of the table. I decided to be a little bit more dramatic and add a little bit more texture. While the back side of the table is drying, put your paint brushes in water. As you can see, they're ready to use again. The bowl is for the glue and the jar is for the paint. Make sure you distinguish between the two, especially if your brushes are identical. And of course, my leftover paint is in a Ziploc bag to ensure it doesn't harden overnight. And that normally works for at least a couple of days. All you'd have to do is get a roll of paper towels and squeeze out your brushes and start to paint again. Now we're almost ready to start putting the icing on the cake. I don't know why, I just get so hungry when I start seeing frostings and things like that. Anything that resembles food when I'm working on furniture just really gets me hungry. So I've already shaken my uh, Rust-Oleum Metallic Bright paint in gold and this time I'm just going to put a light coat on it and what that's going to do when I apply the paint, it's just kind of come around the edges of the crackling of that ivory paint. So you're going to see a little bit more of a leafy kind of look to it. And I thought that would be perfect to get a little sparkle or a little glitter or a little bling to the furniture. So here we go. Let's start spray painting. Not too much now. And that's just enough. Now just start layering on that paint. Remember, it's just like icing a cake. Dabbing it on, not really parting the glue.
And now just add one more thin layer of your spray paint. Now that's the icing on the cake. So in just a little while, it should be dry and crackling away. And then we're only going to add our final, final glaze, which is crystal clear. And this table is ready to take the foyer. And we are now two hours into the process of drying. And as you can see, the details of the crackling paint is starting to come in. I did go back along the edges and I actually used my spray paint along the edges stood back about 12 inches and angled the can upward so that the paint would simply hit the edges around the trim. It is now time to remove our actual tape. Now I've let this get a little too hard unlike I stated before um, but you can still go ahead and remove it in basically the same way. So what you want to do is cut along the edges of the tape like so, very easy. Make sure that you can lift it up, press against the edge so that you don't tear off any excess paint and have to go back and redo it. Holding down that edge, pulling it up that way. See that just comes up. Remember you did save some of your leftover um, paint, gold spray paint, to so make sure you can go back and touch up those edges and see how clean that is. So then now you want to place your blade along the edge and apply a little bit of pressure like so I am applying pressure and you simply want to pull and that's how you remove the tape just pull and you get a nice edge and now to apply our new and improved appliques um, as you know the other ones were destroyed with the chemicals that I used to strip the furniture so I've replaced those. All I'm doing now is applying a little wood glue. Very easy to do. And now we are going to place them in their position. I've kind of used a measurement tool here on the other side um, on the, as a guideline for me. So my eye is that measurement tool. And there we go. Remember this glue is going to dry or clear anyway. So you do not worry since you've been using glue all along. And straighten that up, hold it in place just for a few seconds. And I also um, just kind of did a little light sanding in that little circle that you saw before I put the applique on. And that was to make sure that the glue adhered. I didn't want to hammer into the piece. I just didn't want to do that. But I do believe that this will hold with the amount of glaze that I'm going to put on top of it in just a few minutes it's going to be firmly in place. There we go, Let's straighten it up a little bit. And now we have our new applique installed. Okay, now the final step is to apply our clear glaze. And guys, this stuff goes on really thick as it states, triple thick. And it's gonna look a little milky, but that's okay because when it dries in a couple of hours, it's going to be clear, which is one of the reasons why if you're going to have a textured piece like this, you want to have the thickness of the glaze, which will kind of even out the finish. So I believe so far we have an excellent, excellent piece. This is where I made my critical mistake last time by applying applying colored glaze. Now we've learned that that's a don't in this particular segment. So now I'm just going to start applying our clear. You stand about 10 to 12 inches away and do keep in mind that you want to be in a well ventilated area. I'm going to start out on the top and you would do it as if you're painting the furniture. Starting out on the top when I get to the front, to the band side, I'm actually going to lay it flat because I want the thickness um, there as well. And I feel that laying it flat would mean that it's going to be, you know, basically in one spot and not have the potential to run. As you know, flatness means stationary. So that's one of the keys to putting on that glaze. I do have a small fan blowing but it doesn't seem to be affecting the application. It's more for ventilation, and my garage door is cracked. 
Now the top of the table is a little bit darker than the band of the table as well as the post slash legs. They are a little bit more on the ivory side and then you have more of a taupe kind of finish on the top. And that came from taking the gold spray paint and just angling it up um, along the edges and spray, spray painting it and just kind of letting that paint fall around the edges so you can see it gets a little bit more gold around the band and has more of a smoky look. I think I'm going to try that on a few more pieces of furniture. It just kind of ages it, kind of gives it that I was caught in the fire but I was rescued kind of look. Um, but that's how that came to be and then these appliques actually came from Hobby Lobby two in a pack for like $1.99. And that's the story of a table completed twice. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Please consider subscribing if you have not already done so. And tell a friend about my channel. As you can see, I actually love to complete projects. And I also like for things to be done well. But I want you to learn as I learn and grow. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Take note in the comments area of all the supplies that I use to complete this project. Very easy to do. And I keep using the word easy that is until you make a mistake and just remember when you do make a mistake it's simply paint just paint over it and move on with your life the end result would be much more flattering and you know what the second time around is always better thank you so much please send your comments to me i'd love to hear your feedback on this journey and if there's something that you're working on and you've questions about, let's tackle those things together. I often go out to YouTube channels and I look around at things and see what people are doing. And believe me, I submit my questions. And that's how I learned to make my actual uh, varnish stain from a YouTuber. The only difference is when she applied it, it worked for her, but it didn't work for me. And I will not use it on crackle paint. So lesson learned. And my final lesson, once you take your piece out of your garage and put it in the house, don't take it back for any reason at all. And just remember, I love the chalk paint. I love partnering with you. And I will see you again soon. Remember, stay prayerful.